massive transnational hazard exercise, the first annual emergency all-sector response, Earth EX 2017. This is just two days. This will be held just two days after the total solar eclipse, August 21st. This is going to be held the 23rd of August, which, according to many, is just one month prior to the Revelation 12 sign of September 23rd, when we are supposed to see a great sign appearing in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the, woman under, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. That's Revelation 12, 1 and 2. This is supposed to be the star charts and planet alignment that is supposed to match up. Revelation 12 sign. September 23rd, 2017. So one month, literally, one month after. Well, I should say a month and... Yeah, so a month after this exercise is supposed to be the Revelation 12 sign. Now, what does that mean? It involves the alignment of the constellations of Virgo, Leo, the Sun, Moon, and planets Mercury, Mars, Venus, and Jupiter. So let's go back to the Black Sky, Black Start Project Protection Initiative. That's going to be two days after the total solar eclipse. This is to restart infrastructure. Ensuring that most or all of the Black Start systems remain fully operational, being fundamental for national security. Let's go into the scenarios. What is a blue sky scenario? Well, a blue sky scenario is when electric generation, transmission, and distribution networks are designed to provide for uninterrupted access to electricity under normal conditions, including a full range of normal weather environments. Then you have a gray sky scenario. Severe weather, like Superstorm Sandy, and other stressing hazards can cause occasional serious interruptions in electric service, typically when local or regional damage to power lines and other distribution hardware cause a shutdown to prevent more serious damage to the system. In such instances, restart of generation facilities generally use power coming in from outside the affected area. The black start and severe examples of such gray sky days, external power may be unavailable or impractical, and power companies then use black start procedures to restart a grid segment without assistance from external power. Outages in such scenarios result from pre-planned shutdowns designed to prevent damage or major hardware elements. Power can usually be restored, at least to the most vital facilities within hours. Now, what is a black sky scenario? It reminds me of falling skies, but black sky scenario. And remember, guys, let's go back to a bill that was extended and amended, 5-2-2017, to coordinate the development and implementation of federal government activities to improve the nation's ability to prepare, avoid, mitigate, respond to, and recover from potentially devastating impacts of space weather events. And I'm thinking of the solar eclipse. I'm thinking of the over 2,000 satellites in the atmosphere in orbit right now. Will the alignments of the planets and the stars have anything to do with Will they affect the satellites? Will this total solar eclipse affect the satellites? Well, this bill also coordinates the activities of the Space Weather Interagency Working Group, which shall be established by the National Science and Technological Technology Council nanu, 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 to continue coordination of executive branch efforts to understand, prepare, coordinate, and plan for space weather. An effective mechanism for improving weather and climate data an agency collaboration model that could benefit space weather observations. Space Weather Research and Forecasting Act. This, H.R. 4702, has been extended until 2030. The United States Space Protection Strategy. This is the Space Protection Strategy Extension Act. Section 911 of the National Defense Authorization Act 
is amended by adding at the end of the following new paragraph. So they're just adding, they're extending this bill. Space protection strategy. Now, the total solar eclipse, once again, this is coming up on the 21st of August. I'm going to be in Idaho. I got invited out there by a really cool documentary crew. They're putting together a 90-minute documentary called Signs. They've been all over the world filming this. And these guys are the real deal. It's nice to know there's people that work for the machine, for the system, that are cool. That are unplugged as much as possible. You can only be unplugged so much inside the Borg. So, I'm going to be in Idaho. There should be over three minutes of footage from this solar eclipse in Idaho. I just find it fascinating that literally two days after this event, they are going full international exercises. And it's the first annual emergency all-sector response transnational hazard exercise program venue Earth. Earth EX 2017. So let's take a look at this. The participating sectors. You've got the private sector, the electric subsector, oil and natural gas subsector, water and wastewater sector, first responders, information management sector, situational awareness sector, and other private sector corporations. Then the government sectors you have. U.S. and allied government departments and agencies, federal, state, and local, energy, emergency management, critical infrastructure, security, defense, health, regulatory, mass care, NGOs. The EIS Council hosts national and international collaboration on resilience and whole community restoration and response planning, addressing severe national and global scale hazards to lifeline infrastructures. So what are these guys doing to protect the nuclear reactors? What I would like to know is they're a backup plan for every nuclear reactor in case it loses power so that it can stay cool enough so it doesn't go into meltdown mode like Fukushima. There's 100 reactors in the States, approximately. Now, if there's some major event, there needs to be some precautions and some security measures set aside, a backup energy source for each reactor. Isn't it amazing that it's the year 2017 and we still use nuclear energy to steam water so you can have air conditioning? And of course the military industrial complex will have spent fuel waiting somewhere in some storage facility probably inside of cat litter in a plastic barrel like we've found before at the WIP facility where they store nuclear waste. Oh, my goodness. Isn't there enough already that we could use? Guys, come on. Now, space weather opportunities. 2,271 satellites are listed at the Goddard Space Flight Center, currently in orbit, over 2,000 of these things. Now, what happens if this total solar eclipse or an asteroid, or a comet, or an EMP, or a solar flare, some crazy space debris, starts knocking some of these satellites out of whack. Then what? Then what happens to the GPS and everything else linked to the satellites? Are these guys worried that this eclipse is going to bring some earthquakes or some natural disasters? Is that why they are testing for international reboot? for an international reboot, essentially. I mean, this is crazy. The Earth EX 2017 First Annual Emergency Hazard Exercise Transnational. Two days after. Nanny, 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 nanny. What's your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen? Make sure to support our sponsors. GetTheTea.com for the best in detox products, healthcare products. Also, have you subscribed yet to leakproject.com? What the heck are you waiting for? Just do it. Just do it. Leakproject.com. And as a premium member at leakproject.com, it's 10 bucks a month. 50 bucks for the year. You'll get access to 1,100 podcasts growing daily, downloadable, streamable, ad-free. And you know what? That 10 bucks a month greatly helps Leak Project. So that's my shameless plug, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here with me. 
question everything if you want to know more. Be excellent to each other. And it's always a good day to be the change you want to see. Nanny, 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 nanny.